Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In order to dig into this parable, let's start with what we need to get into heaven. We're going to start this by a man who gets to the pearly gates of heaven, and he finds St. Peter there. So St. Peter says, hey, this is how getting into heaven works. You need 100 points in order to get in. So you need to tell me what you've done in your life, and I'll give you a certain number of points for each thing. And depending on how much you've done, when you reach 100, it's then that you'll get in. Okay, says the man. I was married to the same woman for over 50 years. I never cheated on her once, not even in my mind. That's wonderful, said St. Pete. That's worth three points. Three points, the man said. Well, I attended church all my life, and I supported the ministry with my tithe and my service. St. Peter said, terrific, that's worth one point. The man says, one point. Well, I worked at the soup kitchen in the city, and I volunteered at the shelter for homeless veterans. Fantastic, St. Peter says. Two more points. The man cried, oh, at this rate, the only way I'm going to get into heaven is by the grace of God. To which St. Peter replied, there's your hundred points. Get on in. The grace of God gives us the hundred points and more, everything that we need to be fit for the kingdom of heaven. And I like this story because it illustrates the parable of the workers in the vineyard. The man in that story, as well as the workers, they think that you can only get something by working for it. You see, there's a common myth in Christianity that says you have to be good to get into heaven. You have to have done enough to get in. And certainly there is a part of us that wants that to be true. The truth about this parable is it, it is hard stuff. It offends our sense of how the economy of God works. And this is because we expect our work life to reflect the kingdom of God, but the reality is that the kingdom of God is more like a healthy family. You see, when I was growing up, I had a brother who was four years older, and I also had a brother who was 11 years younger. Yes, I grew up in a blended family, so you can get those age ranges there quite easily. I also grew up in a family that didn't have a lot of money but that really liked to be able to celebrate Christmas with our friends and family. So the one way we could do that was to bake about a hundred dozen cookies. And to get that many cookies, you have to start in October. We used to use my grandma's deep freeze in order to store said cookies. The way that this worked was mom would be in the kitchen I would go and hang out and have some mom talk time. I also absolutely love, I'm not sure if you've ever done it, but if you just take a spoonful of brown sugar, it's one of the best things you will ever eat. And my job was, I was the kiss cookie person. I unwrapped all the Hershey's Kisses, and I stuck them on right after those cookies came out of the oven so that they would melt on, and that was my job. My older brother, he decided to fight me because we liked to lick the bowl. My little brother just sat in the high chair, and he was more trouble, and really not even a worker at all. So you had me putting the kisses in, my brother cleaning the bowl, and then my little brother who just kind of hung out. But the thing was, at the end of the afternoon when we were all dragging, I can't believe my mom did this, but we would all go to Dairy Queen <laughs> as a celebration of cookie baking. And when we got to Dairy Queen, we would all receive our favorite treat. You see, families operate in a way that helps the younger ones who can't take care of themselves and make sure that they are loved and that they are cared for. 
healthy family care for all the family members, taking into account what is appropriate for each and doesn't give according to what was earned. This is a better picture of what the kingdom of God looks like. And the reality that God has already claimed and named each of us changes the way that we see this parable. You see, we are all children of God. We are all part of God's family. And as a member of the family, you've already been given all the love and all the grace that you would ever need. And it's because God said so. It's because of who God is that we receive, not a result of what you have done. And the thing is then, we do get to live our lives of love and service because of who God has shown us that he is. And this is a wonderful gift. We get to learn from the goodness of our Father. And then we get to go and live that out. There's an old rabbinic parable about a farmer who had two sons. As soon as those sons were old enough to walk, he took them out into the fields and he taught them everything he knew about growing crops and taking care of the animals. When he got too old to work, the boys took over the toys of the farm. And when their father died, they decided that they liked that working together so much that they were just going to keep that partnership. Each brother contributed what he could, and during the harvest, they would divide up what they had been able to produce evenly. Across the years, the older brother never married. He was an old bachelor farmer. The younger did marry, and he was blessed with eight wonderful children. Some years later, they were having a wonderful harvest, and the older brother thought to himself one night, my brother has 10 mouths to feed, and I only have one. He needs more of this harvest than I do, but he is much too fair to renegotiate. But I know what I'll do. In the dead of night, when he is asleep, I'll take some of what I have from my barn, and I'll put it in his. At the very same time that he was thinking this, his younger brother was thinking to himself, God has given me these wonderful children, and my brother hasn't been so fortunate. He really needs more of the harvest than I do, but he's much too fair. He'll never renegotiate. I know what I'll do. In the dead of night when he's asleep, I'll go and get some stuff from my barn, and I'll slip it into his barn. And so one night when the moon was full, as you might have already anticipated, those two brothers came face to face, each on a mission of generosity. An old rabbi said that there wasn't a cloud in a sky that night, but a gentle rain began to fall. And you know what it was? It was God weeping for joy because two of his children had gotten the point. Two of his children had come to realize that generosity is the deepest characteristic of the holy. And because we are made in God's image, our being generous is the secret to our joy as well. You see, life is not fair. And thanks be to God that life is not fair. And it's not fair because it is rooted in God's grace. And God's grace is sufficient for each of us. Amen.